that now. Now so. I edit the Q&A. Yeah, now you do like, it. So Ten point hat. Do whatever. Ten point hat. <laughs> Ten point hat. <laughs> Look at all this work you're creating for yourself. <laughs> What's up, everyone, and welcome to the weekly Q&A. For our first question, Natasha Waring asks if we'd like to see Natalie Portman return to Star Wars, and if so, how? Yeah, so Natalie was recently asked, as every Star Wars actor, I guess, is destined to do from now until the end of time, uh, would you ever be in Star Wars again? And Natalie said, sure. I haven't received a phone call or anything, but she would. Which is a crime <laughs> that she hasn't been invited back yet. I, well, I, I would love to discuss, as Natasha brings up, what in what way would we like to see Padme return, if at all? I mean... It sounds like it, you definitely want to see Padme again. Yes, yeah. I, I do. I think Padme is like this integral part of Anakin's story and just Star Wars in general, and she just kind of gets glazed over most of the time. I was going to say the same thing that... You know, in Obi-Wan Kenobi, the series, it's like they come so close to just say your name like that would be nice. Say yeah. Padme's name uh, on the screen again. Mm -hmm. And and that seems to have been just kind of something that I wish the sequel trilogy or uh, I guess the Mandalorian at least brought B1 battle droids into it. But the prequels in general, sometimes I wish uh, there would be more connection and instead of like the occasional line or mention of Darth Sidious like those little crumbs I'm like ooh, that's so good <laughs> yeah we've been re-watching Obi-Wan and they give us that amazing uh cut at the very beginning of like a basic synopsis of what happened in the prequels and Padme's in it a few times but then we go on I think it's episode two and we see Obi-Wan tell little Leia you know you remind me of Someone, a friend I once knew. A friend, I, like if you're gonna do that, show some ways that Padme might have reminded Obi Wan of Little Leia in that little like synopsis. Part. Well, and then at the end of that series, uh, he does sit down and he tells Little Leia, <laughs> I like that we just call her Little Leia instead of just Leia. She's little. But, yeah, he's he kneels down and he tells her like your father was great, your mother was great. I'm paraphrasing, but I was just like. You've been making these parallels between Leia and Padme the whole show, and I just wanted you to name her. But mm -hmm. maybe that was part of keeping her secret and safe and not trusting a life-altering secret to a 10-year-old. I, I kind of get it, but I just I just wanted maybe some acknowledgement from Obi-Wan in, in his fight with Vader of just, like, when he's apologizing, I'm sorry I failed you, I'm sorry about Padme, like, so... We're, we're just talking about her name alone, but if Natalie Portman is willing to come back, yeah, I, I think that we could still have flashbacks or visions in the Force or something like that. Mm -hmm. Let's get like a spinoff Clone Wars show called Clone Wars The War Room, <laughs> and it's just like Senate stuff. Well, I mean, I think Andor is showing us this political intrigue side of things that uh, fans really responded to. I think season two might be even more political. Again, we we have Obi-Wan on the mind, but we saw Bail Organa pop up and we were like, oh, I can't wait for him to hopefully be in season two of Andor, mm. see the rebellion grow. Uh, so we could do like a, a political intrigue show set during the Clone Wars. I mean, E.K. Johnston has given us several books about Padme and the Handmaidens, and I think it would be cool to see that as a show or something, just just see how much they did, how much they accomplished, what what was going on behind the scenes, because those books go into so much detail about what the handma handmaidens did for her, like the reason why she has these huge, complicated looking dresses. Like there's there's a little bit more to that. So I think there's some cool stuff there that could be explored in like an animated show or something. And we could talk about the fact that you know, Natalie could come back and not necessarily play Padme. She could play Sabe, <laughs> her her body devil. But then people would be like, but what about Kira Knightley? Yeah. She doesn't remember being in Star Wars. <laughs> I can't did she say something like that? Yeah. She That's said funny. I was in Star Wars. <laughs> like, oh yeah. I mean she could, but like if they get Natalie Portman to come back, it feels like You wanna like, see her as Padme. Yeah. Make her Padme. Come on. I think there's a way that it could be done. Uh, I'll be interested to see if they ever do it. And if they, like, 
I, again, with Obi-Wan, they, they did the flashbacks with Obi-Wan and Anakin, and uh, they did a little bit of de-aging, but they were basically like, you know, it's Hayden and Ewan back on screen together. It's like, you know you want this. And we I like was very willing to forgive that they didn't, fully deep fake them and i don't i'm i'm glad they went that direction instead of uh completely digitally altering their faces so i think i would be willing to be like yes present day natalie portman is playing padme from the clone wars whatever i mean natalie portman looks great yeah exactly (laughs) (laughs) starkasm wants to know if ray or luke's jedi academy could have been made up by students hidden away by the hidden path i think so I think that that is something that even lines up with stuff that George Lucas said when he has talked about his own uh, potential episodes 7, 8, and 9. He talked about Luke seeking out other survivors of Order 66. So, you know, every time someone sees a new Jedi that survived Order 66 and fans are like, there's another one. It's like, oh, George Lucas was going to do that too. Or at least he threw around the idea. So where were all these survivors going to come from? I think it makes sense that the hidden path would be a way to keep, especially the next generation, safe and secret, but potentially Jedi like Quinlan Voss or uh, anyone else that were involved in it. Keller and Beck, fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the idea of showing us the path, the hidden path in Obi-Wan and and other Star Wars properties, it's such a smart idea because... It gives us a, re- a reason to believe that there were more survivors, and we should celebrate that and not get angry about it, right? Like, it makes sense that out of all the Jedi, every single one of the Jedi, more would have survived. Yeah, I mean, the, the statistic I always bring up is even if the Jedi Purge and Order 66 combined were 99% effective, there's still 100 survivors, and that feels realistic that feels like it could happen and then uh or you have sorry i didn't mean to cut you off but you have four sensitive kids that might might be found along the way after order 66 they might not be jedi but they still need to be protected exactly uh we're just gonna be talking about obi-wan kenobi this whole time but we have corin horn out there somewhere uh so maybe he became part of luke's academy and nope. then left to become an X-Wing pilot before anything <laughs> terrible happened to him. The little girl in uh, Bandits of Golok. Golok. Yeah. We can just, uh, for a second, pretend like that was canon. And like that was such a cool story. And the little hidden uh, pathway under the water yeah. that she went into. Let's let's just assume that was canon. And honestly, I want to see more stuff like that. I think the hidden path offers up some really cool storytelling potential exactly like that, where the how do you hide how would a jedi hide their safe houses and being underwater where you have to part the water and open the oh that was really cool Mm -hmm. uh so yeah i I think that the hidden path is a good way to uh keep jedi secret keep new force sensitive kids secret also i don't want to go too deep into survivor stuff because I, i know the game's been out a month but some people still haven't played it all the way through it offers up some ideas for where the hidden path could end up eventually and it's like they may have the hidden path may have been pretty secluded and like just our our goal as jedi now if let's say quinlan voss is there and he's like i am just here to protect these kids Mm -hmm. and like that's it that's my mission that's how i feel i can best serve the galaxy as a jedi right now and might not even know what else is happening (laughs) i don't know Eric Stommer and Andy Biz ask if the Star Wars Jedi franchise should expand into different eras and which would we like to see? Well, at first, I think that we still haven't gotten any official announcement of a third game, but I think it's safe to assume that'll happen. Uh, I think Cal's story is going to continue, so I'm fine with that franchise sticking in the current era that it's in until that's over. Uh, I would happily see them expand into any of the new eras that we've heard about whether it like they could change up the gameplay pretty significantly if they especially went back to like the dawn of the jedi or the high republic the old republic i think there are a lot of different things the new jedi order by the time the third game is out and they're working on another one then yeah they're gonna have options of eras to go to yeah i think especially when you look at the high republic 
and the Old Republic, from a game making standpoint, as far as game mechanics go, there's a lot more to play with in those eras. A lot more Jedi characters. If you go to the Old Republic, there's a lot more Sith running around to deal with. Um, and we talked about this earlier. In the High Republic, it's written out like a lot of the Jedi at that time saw the Force as specific things or they saw them in different ways like they would see them as music or as an ocean or water or like stuff like that so it would be cool to be able to customize your character a little bit more have have different people to choose from who see the force differently yeah like i i don't know how that could affect gameplay but the idea that you would spend the whole game playing as avar chris who sees the force through music like okay let's say you got to choose your character it's like young avar chris stellan geos or elzar man in the high republic and they each see the force in a different way and so the story would be the same story but you might be able to play it three times and see it from a different perspective uh something like that i think would be really interesting each character as you play through the game could have little different nuances so like Cal has those force visions. Mm -hmm. So for them, it could be like music that they hear. It would be like the same looking thing in the game, but it would be presented slightly, slightly differently. And then that would be a reason to play the whole game three different times because (laughs) everything is a little bit different according to which character you're playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Replayability. Not that I really need that. I'm on my third playthrough right now or watching you play through it for my third time. Uh, But yeah, I, I think that, I love the system. I love the combat system. I also think it would be a chance to start with like a clean slate. Uh, Something that I talked about for Survivor, I was nervous that Cal would lose a lot of abilities and you'd have to gain them back. And it's like, no, they didn't do that. He is the Jedi he was at the end of Fallen Order plus some. And then you unlock new abilities, new gadgets and so on. So the controller's getting pretty full. But if we started with a new Jedi, a Padawan, or even a youngling or something, like you could learn how to pull and push again, and it would make complete sense. You could build up a new Jedi character over a new trilogy, and then they could go to a new era. Mm-hmm. It's like, and I'm I'm imagining going to the dawn of the Jedi time and seeing how different it might be to build and customize your lightsaber. We don't know what they're gonna look like back then. Mm-hmm. It, it could be completely different. So. I think there would be a lot of chances to explore. You could have a light whip. Sure. Instead of a saber. That's a great idea. Uh, that's something they could add into <laughs> Star Wars Jedi 3 as well. But yeah. uh, just different types of lightsabers. I, I think there's still plenty of, uh, I don't know, interesting Star Wars stuff to mine mm-hmm. that they might not get to with Cal's story, but they could in the High Republic, Old Republic, Dawn, New Jedi Order. I think they could keep this going for a while. And I love the combat system and the the basic groundwork of the game. Mm-hmm. So I'd be happy if they kept doing that. Oh, they could do a, a Zelda Breath of the Wild type game with Rey, where she's just like exploring new places. I mean, I, I think that would be interesting as well. Because of... in that time period, there's not she doesn't know where any other Jedi are, she's got to go out and look for them. I mean, yeah, we could do like a post episode nine story because the next movie is going to take place 15 years into the future. So just kind of Ray teaching herself about the force and the Jedi and kind of choosing what from the old philosophy to keep, what to make new. I mean, I hope, I would hope that Luke, Obi-Wan, any force ghost, like, please come and offer some assistance and advice. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Now I'm into this idea because like playing a game like Breath of the Wild, Wild, (laughs) let's just assume Rey gets knocked out and loses her memory. (laughs) Come on. No. No. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kidding. Uh, But like, imagine Rey's character going around to different temples and being able to explore them, learn new things about the Force, speak to different Force ghosts from all different time periods. Like, in a video game, that would be easy to do. Mm-hmm. Canon-wise, I mean, might be a little tricky, but I would love a game like I that. I mean, I think they could figure it out, and I would say Survivor already took some cues from Breath of the Wild in the sense that you're on 
Kobo, this pretty large open world, you can go find shrines, aka old temples, and learn stuff from them, unlock things. We could see Ray do that, but on like a galactic scale. Uh, maybe not every planet has a map as big as Kobo, but you just like, hey, I heard there was an old Jedi temple on Elfrona. Uh, you know, well, Kylo Ren destroyed it in the comics, but <laughs> she could still go and like find stuff from the High Republic, explore those old maybe temples. Maybe there was like an underground part that he sure, didn't explore. She could get back into it. It's explode. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, there's something that Marin does in Survivor that I like a lot. Like Cal will break something and Marin will roll her eyes and fix it with magic so it's like they could fix things <laughs> yeah it'd be fine <laughs> but yeah i think that's a really cool idea of just a jedi alone in the galaxy well finn would probably finn is there to help if maybe he's off on his own mission like i'm gonna go to this planet and check mm -hmm. things out then Ooh. bb8 or it could be something kind of like the upcoming spider-man 2 game where you switch between uh miles and peter parker so you could kind of play as Ray or Finn. Yeah. Cuz be Finn, cool. Finn yeah, Finn has a lot more to learn. And that gives us he doesn't need to bump his head. He is in the middle of learning about his abilities. So you could go between like Ray could be the one that can do things on certain planets and then Finn is over here learning to like he's the one that will unlock new areas maybe. Yeah. And Ray, I think Ray's whole thing would be learning how to balance the dark and the light within her. She kind of learned that, but very quickly, like in a very short <laughs> it, amount of it time. It doesn't mean the struggle is over. Yeah, so she would be dealing with those struggles, but also learning how to teach mm -hmm. between her She and unlocks Finn. new teaching skills. <laughs> yeah. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. I've struggled with stress and anxiety for years. I started going to therapy back in 2012 and have been going off and on ever since. Talking to a therapist has been a huge help for my mental health as well as my professional and personal life, but there's no denying therapy can be expensive and time consuming. That's where BetterHelp is different. Their services are more affordable than in-person therapy and you can visit a therapist from the comfort and privacy of your home. When you sign up, you just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and then you get matched with a licensed therapist chosen to meet those needs in as little as 48 hours. BetterHelp offers a broad range of expertise with over 20,000 therapists that can give you access to help that may not be available in your area. Schedule secure video and phone sessions and exchange unlimited messages. If you're not happy with your therapist, you can request a new one at no additional charge. Join 3 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com SWE and get on your way to being your best self. That's betterhelp.com slash SWE. Joseph Mizakis wants to know which one of us is the more tinfoil hat speculative type and how often we quote Star Wars around the house in daily life. Well, how many more times have you had to Photoshop a tinfoil hat on me versus yourself? It's definitely you. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely part of that is... <laughs> Part of that is because I don't bring up tinfoil hats as much because I don't want to have to put the tinfoil hat <laughs> on. I'm like, ah, oh, that's so much extra work. Uh, but you do that now. Now so. I edit the q &As Yeah, now you I'm do like, it. Tinfoil so hat. Do whatever. Tinfoil hat. <laughs> tinfoil hat. <laughs> Look at all this work you're creating for yourself. <laughs> um, but I, I think we're both pretty grounded. And if, if we have a tinfoil hat theory, we know it's a tinfoil hat. Like, this is out there. Probably not going to happen, Yeah, but it's just a thought we had. Any tinfoil hat theories that I come up with, I'm like, you know what would be cool or fun or random? Like, it, it's a it's a random thought I have that I'm calling a tinfoil hat theory, but I'm not attached to it whatsoever. Right. <laughs> As for quotes, I don't think we... I think especially I and all of my friends used to quote things, not just Star Wars, but just pop culture like nonstop, which I'm sure was a joy to be around. It was uh, different. <laughs> I was like, just, just say your own words. Oh, no, we didn't know how. <laughs> we just expressed ourselves through quotes and would make each other laugh just by saying things from other things. Um, so yeah, I feel like I don't just quote things as much anymore. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of ones that we might say some of the time. I care is one that yeah. if we catch each other like saying something about something and then we say, I don't I care. I care. I care. Yeah. Or stay on target if if we're doing something that requires 
that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> going to the bathroom. Sure. Oh, I, I'm going to print that out and put it on the toilet. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I feel like I quote Star Wars more to uh, Hilo or Pippin. Like, I don't know why, just when you're talking Because I'm to, tired of it. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I know that, I mean, still with my friends playing video games, it comes up a lot, uh, especially it was incessant when, when Squadrons came out, because that's all we did. We we would talk about like, hey, I'm going to go take out this part of the Star Destroyer. And then once that had been settled, it was just constant chatter from A New Hope or Empire or Return yeah. of the Jedi. I will say anytime something is shown in a movie or a TV show, that doesn't normally fly and then they start flying we'll say they, they fly, fly now. now the dead speak comes up a lot uh <laughs> one of my buddies matt he is not that super into star wars but he goes and sees all the movies with us when they come out uh he loves to say the dead speak to me because he knows it's going to make me laugh in a good like i genuinely do like that line uh <laughs> but he thinks it's hilarious and so I like saying it as if I were Bane, though. The dead speak. The dead speak. I like to say it as like a 1950s reporter. The dead speak. <laughs> like, <laughs> breaking news. There's so many different ways to make it sound. Yeah, it all works. But I think it's such a pulpy, fun line. And I have my thoughts about the Emperor coming back in The Rise of Skywalker. But the dead speak, I genuinely do like that. Yeah. I think we end up quoting more... Stuff from like the bad lip reading songs in our daily lives. Yeah, that's than the true. The actual movies, like that log had a child. That is true. <laughs> it that's weird. I think it's you're right. Weird. I think we quote parodies almost more than we quote oh, actual Star Wars. Oh yeah, the robot chicken. Uh huh. Oh, you look crazy. Oopsie daisy. <laughs> like y- yeah, that's a weird thing to realize. <laughs> it's because it's silly. Like we we spend like every day of our normal working lives looking at and and studying and really taking Star, Star Wars, Wars seriously. Yeah, taking it. Yeah. So the silly stuff that's what stays like fresh in our mind. That's true. Stormtrooper. Stormtrooper. Bird person asks us a question from Force Center and wants to know what accessories our own hypothetical action figures would come with. <laughs> Ooh. Fun question. And uh, they bring that up because we were recently on their figure fights show for like weeks straight, weeks at a time, weeks continuing. I don't know. We were on there for like four episodes. Uh, it's a super fun show. I'll put a link to the ep- the cruel episode in the cards where Joseph made me fight Big Stark Lighter uh, against the armorer and like the six inch black series while he was just a three and a... Uh, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> it was unfair. Okay. It was unfair, Joseph. Accessories. But, uh, the Timelines reference book for me. Mm-hmm. That checks out. Uh, I would have my security water Your bottle. water bottle. Because uh, I carry it around with me everywhere. Ooh. ooh uh, we could be like those sets where you have to get both of them to get one complete accessory. Kind of like the, the new Indiana Jones action figures. If you get all of them, you can rebuild the arc. So... We could each come with like half of a little Lego set. And then, <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, and then you combine it. <laughs> yeah, I like that. You could come with Pippin. I'll come with Hilo. Oh yeah, they could they could come in like their own little pack, like the little Grogu Aww. accessory pack. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> collect them all. Um, and then we could come with like battle damaged arms from when Pippin scratches us or something. Yes, uh, I would also have changeable sweatpants mm. that are both the same. I would come with <laughs> Cause, the, the same. Because I have like three or four pairs of the same sweatpants because I love them so much. Now I regret not. I, I picked up this shirt and then I was like, someone literally last week made fun of me and asked if I had any other shirts. But I would have to be wearing the that green Jedi Temple Challenge shirt. I think that would be my outfit. Mm-hmm. And you would not come with a change. But I like yours. A <laughs> change of identical sweatpants. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, mine would come with a... 12 to 15 step skincare set like a ton of little lotion bottles <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, i'm just keeping it real <laughs> you've seen my bathroom <laughs> i have it's well it's our bathroom but it might as well be yours you've seen my side of our bathroom and your side has leaked onto my side at times so i think that means you're washing your face and taking care of your skin yes to that but also some of your stuff will end up on my side yeah, that that's is true. just 
I don't even know what this does. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I guess I should come with like an action figure with an action figure. Give me a little Biggs action figure. Mm -hmm. That would be fun. (laughs) On to YouTube questions. Josh Lightsaber Boy wants to know what kind of robes Rey's new Jedi Order will have. This is it. We we were talking about this earlier of just, you know, we don't know what the dawn of the Jedi is going to look like and the the evolution of Jedi over time from their creation through the high, old republic to the high republic to the prequels and then moving into the future. It kind of looks like Luke just adopted the same robes as came before. Mm-hmm. I would like to see uh Rey step it up in the fashion department and not just repeat the same old thing oh i think it depends on uh if she has the availability to do that i don't think it might be hard to make i don't think it's gonna be uh the top of high her priority list yeah (laughs) like i think she's just gonna go and learn but i I would like to see each jedi feel a little distinct Mm. i think like I i want her to have her own look and finn to have her own look his own look yeah i think uh, because Ray's outfit has changed a little, but stayed pretty much the same through all the three sequel trilogy movies, I think the new robe look is going to be the crisscross. Oh, is she going to mandate that? The crisscross sash. She's going to she make has, that happen. Uh, the belt and maybe the arm wraps. Well, then there has to be a scene of Finn trying to figure out how to put it on because every time we have to put it on you for your dark Ray cosplay, we're like, which side goes over which, and there's a loop here. Yeah. That's it's... mostly me, because you're just standing there, and I'm <laughs> responsible for putting the cloth on, and I'm like, I cannot wrap my head around this. You have so to be a Jedi to remember how to are, do it. Those robes are too confusing. Yeah. <laughs> I do like the look, though. So, I don't know. I, I just think that a little more individuality would be cool to see. Yeah, I like that. I think she would be down for that. Adam asks why Sabine and the others waited five years to search for Ezra. So we haven't started our Rebels rewatch yet, and we need to do that so we can get through it before Ahsoka. Yes. But I believe at the end, in like the epilogue, Sabine talks about waiting on Lothal to help defend it so that she could fight back against the Empire if they came for retribution. But, you know, they liberated Lothal and then... The Empire had other things to deal with, like the loss of the Death Star, and she was like, the attack never came. So there is that explanation, but we also don't know that they did wait five years. Mm -hmm. We don't know that this is the start of the search. Like, Sabine may have been trying to find a lead for five years. Right, that's what I was going to say. They they. They just disappeared into hyperspace. They have no clue where they went, no leads no help so i just assume they didn't know where to look and they might have been looking just in as many places as they could try to look into but like they had their own stuff going on and yeah. like you said like they were still running from and and like fighting against the empire at that time so i i think we're going to see them get the lead that they need in order to find ezra or he just shows up. <laughs> no, I think th- the search is going to begin in earnest. I think you're right that they will get a solid lead. We also don't know what Ahsoka has been up to this whole time. If her time in the world between worlds, if she kind of teleported from one time to another or what's happened. Is that how that works? I I don't know. Ma. Look, I don't have time to get into the intricacies <laughs> of the world between world. <laughs> Like, I think that potentially she walked into that she one. could time travel, but you can't change the past. That's what I'm trying to get at with mm, well, the world between worlds. Death. You can't change the past. If it happened, it happened. Okay. But you can All right. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know where she's been for five years. So I don't think Ahsoka has been searching for Ezra, but I kind of get the feeling Sabine has been doing what she could. Also... The Mandalorian people went through a purge, so like Sabine probably had to deal with that at some yeah, point. That's I, true. I think we're going to get our answers in Ahsoka. Yeah. Santodi Benedict wants to know if the ancient Jedi will use proto sabers. We're doing a lot of stuff about like what what's the next era of Star Wars going to look like, or the next two eras. Uh, I don't know. So proto sabers in Legends 
it was part of the evolution of the lightsaber where first it was like a physical blade that they kind of imbued with the force and then they figured out how to make lightsabers but they needed to be connected to a power pack basically Mm -hmm. i'm not sure i my gut says they're just gonna be older looking but familiar looking lightsabers but i would also be like my little nerd heart would be very excited to see a proto saber on screen. I would love to see the kind of uh, we don't know really exactly what it was, but that sword in Secrets of the Empire. Yeah, I remember when we did that, we freaked out about that sword. We That's were like, true. "What is it? You know Where what? is it from? Yeah, I who did it belong to? Like, it's a sword that kind of like ignited in this like blue glow, but it was a physical sword, so it would be cool to see." them have these actual weapons where they could like maybe take a kyber crystal and like make it into the weapons hilt huh and so then it's like a mix of the two yeah i forgot about that we we did that five years ago um and i've they... never forgotten about it. <laughs> it it was a big deal at the time and it was described as like the the pre lightsaber so it will be interesting to see what they do with that if because not everyone could go see Secrets of the Empire. I don't think that that is super common knowledge <laughs> that they would necessarily have to strictly stick to. We paid but, someone to to design it and like do a mock up uh, for us so that we could use it in a video. Yeah, because there were no images of it. Um so yeah, we had some fan art. I'll try to find it in my files. <laughs> but yeah, I think that would be really interesting if they went the physical blade route. I guess I've been expecting them to just go straight to having lightsabers, but maybe not. And maybe we we talked about Hu Yang potentially being in the Dawn of the Jedi movie, and we could see like the evolution of the weapon. Yeah, it depends on. I, I guess it depends on what Hu Yang wants to start out with, because <laughs> he was in charge of all that. I don't know if he was at that point. It, it could be just the two of them brainstorming and trying to figure it out. Yeah. They're, these swords are heavy. Can yeah. we just carry around the hill? Yeah, and I just make, want the handle. <laughs> make a magic sword pop out of it. That'd be that'd be nice. I imagine the, the proto sabers, the ones with the battery packs, mm-hmm. to be kind of like the car phones of the 80s. They're just like huge and uh-huh. chunky, and they've got that spiral cord. Yep. <laughs> I like the spiral the, cord idea. Yeah. Going to the back, the battery pack. <laughs> Mild Cartoon Violence asks if Quinlan Voss could appear in a future Star Wars Jedi game and points out that he and Cal both dated Night Sisters. Okay. I thought, I like did not think about that when I thought about Quinlan Voss. So in Survivor, when the story starts to get wrapped up in the path, I was like, are we about to see Quinlan Voss? I was I was starting to get excited about that. But then Marin has a line of like, if I had run into more Jedi, I would have told you, Cal. So I was like, ah. Spoilers. But, but it did. That's like, <laughs> that's kidding. pretty early game. But there was uh, a moment where I thought we might we might see Quinlan Voss in this video game. We, we talked about that, I think, before it even came out, the, the possibility of him showing up. Um, and yeah, then- so many people like brought it up about the could the path be in Star Wars Jedi Survivor and I was like it could be probably won't be like I just didn't think it was going to connect that strongly to Obi-Wan but uh here we go we're coming full circle with the Obi-Wan connections but like that show connected with Fallen Order very strongly and then even had connections to Survivor where it like you can find Seer Junda in Eno Cordova's name in the path mm-hmm. where Obi-Wan visits. And it's, and still I was like, nah, it's not going to connect. And then it did. And I was like, like great job. Great job, Lucasfilm. That I, was good. I think I, I would like to say high possibility of Quinlan Voss showing up in the possibly happening third Star Wars Jedi game. Because he, he needs more mentors. And, and uh, they, they point out that Cal has a lot in common with Quinlan. Like Quinlan fell to the dark side in Dark Disciple and fell in love with Asajj Ventress. So he they, could, they like, do see, see things or, or And psychometry, yeah. 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 They, <laughs> I didn't even think of that one. But they are very similar Jedi. 
and and Quinlan also has some similarities. Uh, never mind. I was about to definitely do some spoilers. Never mind on that. Watch yourself. I'm watching myself. But I, I think that Quinlan would make an excellent mentor to Cal. Yeah. Uh, if he needs one. I'm not going to like say this is definitely happening, but there have been so many teases about Quinlan Voss at this point that it's like, come on. But I wonder if that's because they're saving him for something. Maybe Star Wars Jedi 3. Yeah. And as far as the fact that they both dated Night Sisters, I mean, that says something about the Night Sisters, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Who wouldn't? (laughs) That's all the time we have for questions today. If you want to leave a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And as always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.